Hello and welcome to Vidra Ambrad channel. So in this tutorial I am going to show you how we can interface the SG9 to servo motor using a PWM with MSP432. So let's get started. This is the uh, SG9 to servo motor. Here you can see this is a 3 pin uh, servo motor. Okay. Here you can see that the yellow pin okay, is a PWM pin. Basically it is an output pin. And uh, the red color pin is the 5 volts pin which should be connected to the the 5 volts of the MSP432 and the brown color pin is the ground pin should be connected to the ground pin of the MSP432 and here you can see that okay, I have connected the PWM pin to P5.6 okay, of the MSP432 so this is one of the PWM channel provided in the MSP432 so now to see uh, some of the specifications of the SG90 servo motor so we need to go and open the data sheet of the SG90 servo motor so now let me open the data sheet of the SG90 servo motor. Here you can see that okay, this is the uh, SG90 uh, which is a 9 gram micro servo motor okay, and it will provide the uh, rotation from 0 degrees to 180 degrees okay. and then if you come down you will be able to see all the specifications of the servo motor that is weight is 9, 9 grams and it will uh, have a torque around 1.8 kg and there are some uh, temperature ranges also and if you scroll down in the next page you will be able to see the the pin mapping okay as i said the orange color pin which is a uh, uh, pwm output pin and the red color one is the uh, vcc pin which should be connected to the 5 volts and the brown color one is the ground which should be connected to the ground and here uh, you will be able to see the timing here okay so the total period that we need to maintain here is the 20 milliseconds period and the duty cycle we should maintain from the 1 to 2 milliseconds okay and in the data sheet they said the position 0 that means 0 degrees you need to provide the 1.5 millisecond pulse uh, which is a middle one and for 90 degrees you should provide the 2 milliseconds pulse and for minus 90 degrees uh, you should provide a 1 milliseconds uh, pulse okay but uh, this is actually wrong okay so to get the 0 degrees accurately so we need to provide the 0.6 milliseconds which is around 3% uh, of the uh, entire duty cycle and for 90 degrees you need to provide the 1.4 milliseconds and for uh, 180 degrees uh, you need to provide the 2.4 milliseconds which is nothing but 12% of the duty cycle so this is what I have mentioned here in the uh, okay this slide okay and here you can see that uh, the duty cycle values uh, the 0.6 milliseconds for uh, 0 degrees that is uh, almost 3 percent of the duty cycle and 1.4 milliseconds is uh, 90 degrees position so you will get uh, around 7 percent of the duty cycle and for 2.4 milliseconds is the uh, 12 percent of the duty cycle for that you will get a uh, 180 degrees position so we will follow these numbers okay and then we'll see the uh, output of the servo motor so that's all for the theory so now go to the code composer studio and then here we are going to copy the one of the existing project so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the blinky project okay so copy this and then paste it here and then rename it as sg90 underscore servo motor Okay, and then click on copy. So now go to the SG90 servo motor and expand this. And of course, we need to also sync the blink.sys config file here. So go and rename it to SG90 underscore servo motor. Okay, and then click on OK. Now go and open the sysconfig file. And then here we don't need any GPOs, okay. Remove this, okay. And then now what we are going to do, we will click on the PWM, okay. We need a PWM that is a pulse width modulation, and then click on add instance here, and it will add the instance. And here you can see that the config, the name of the PWM is config underscore PWM underscore zero, and of course it will use the SM clock, okay. And the pin marks uh, the one, the pin that we are going to use, it is a P5.6, okay. Let me see what is the pin. This is a P5.6. Okay, now go and select the P5.6. So this is a P5.6. Okay, 
so that's all for the configuration okay now save the configuration and then now click on the project and click on the hammer icon to build the project to see the configuration changes in the <coughs> project so we got three errors uh, what is that the config underscore gpa underscore blue led is undefined that is true so before that we rename this uh, blink.c file to uh, let me rename it as sc90 underscore servo motor okay and click on okay and then click on this file and then here so we don't need this and also we don't need any gpus here and also we don't need all this okay remove this also so uh, that's all for this okay and also we don't need gpus here and then save the code and then click on the project again and then click on the hammer icon to compile the project hopefully this time will not get any errors uh, so you can see that the build is compiled successfully without any errors and warnings so now what we are going to do is we are going to include the driver so include the driver like di slash so driver slash we want pwm dot h here okay so once we have uh, included the driver file and then here we need to initialize the driver function so for that we need to call the pwm underscore init this is the initialization function okay and then to work with the pwm driver as you know first we need to define the uh, pwm params okay so pwm underscore params okay and then give a name as um, maybe pwm okay and then also we need to declare the pwm handle so for that we need to call the pwm handle structure and then name it as a pwm handle here okay and then here you rename it as a pwm params now after the parameter initialization so we need to call the sum of the members of the uh, the pwm params okay so now use the uh, pwm params okay and then first thing that we need to declare that as a uh, duty side units okay so once the parameter initialization is done so we need to uh, call the sum of the parameters of the the pwm params so for that you need to copy the pwm params here and then the first thing that we need to provide that is a duty units okay so in which units you want to pass the value so i want to pass the values in terms of okay pwm underscore duty which is in terms of uh, micro here we have only three options so the first one is the duty uh, which is in microseconds and the second one is the duty in counts okay and the other one is the duty in fractions so we are going to use the duty in microseconds okay and then the second thing that we need to pass here is so duty value so i'll make it to zero initially okay and then the third parameter that we need to pass is the uh, period in units okay so here we have specified the duty units in microseconds so the period also we need to pass it in microseconds then call the pwm underscore okay. so period in microseconds here you can see there are only three options one is the counts and the second one is the hedge and the third one is the microseconds so we are going to pass the uh, period of units in microseconds only and then use the microsecond and then the last thing that we need to pass here is uh, the period value okay and here you can see in the data sheet uh, here you can see that uh, the total period of the uh, this cycle is 20 milliseconds and if we want to convert this to microseconds then you will get 20,000 microseconds so that 20,000 microseconds you need to pass here so go to code again and instead of passing a value directly here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to declare a variable here so which is of 32 bit type okay and then give it as a pwm period okay and then here you can add code it okay it's a 20,000, which is nothing but 20 milliseconds okay 
and this value will pass it here. So once the uh, the parameter is declared, okay, we need to open the PWM connection, okay. So then for that you need to call the PWM underscore open and the first parameter is the PWM um, index that is nothing but a config underscore PWM zero and the second one is the params, okay. So we need to pass the PWM params here and it will return a handle, okay. Uh, so the handle is the PWM handle. Now, once the uh, connection is open successfully, we can also check the whether the connection is properly open or not. Okay. So, if the PWM handle is equals to null, then there is a problem with the opening of PWM. Okay. So, then we are going to uh, infinite while loop. Okay. Then, if not the case, then we need to start the PWM here. Okay, to start the PWM, there is a function called PWM underscore start. Okay. And then here we need to pass the PWM handle. Okay. So this will this function will start the PWM. Now we need to pass the 0 0.6 milliseconds for the 0 degree position and then 1.4 milliseconds for the 90 degrees position and then 2.4 milliseconds for the 180 degrees position. So now we are going to pass this. Okay, to the PWM output pin that is P5.6. Okay, now go to the code again and to send the PWM values to the P5.6 pin. So there is a function called PWM underscore. Okay, set duty. Okay, and here the first one is the handle, and the second one is the we need to provide the PWM period. Okay, which is nothing but in terms of uh, duty cycle. So what I am going to do is I am going to declare a variable here. Okay. Which is also 32 bit type, okay, and then name it as duty cycle and initialize to 0, okay, and then what I am going to do is I am going to pass the duty cycle, okay. So first is the 600 milliseconds and then give a delay of uh, let's say 1 second, okay. And then similarly we need to do for the copy this and then similarly we need to do for the which is 1.4 nothing but 1400 microseconds 2400 for the 180 degrees position okay this is for uh, 0 degrees okay and this is for 90 degrees and this is for 180 degrees ok save the code so that's all for the code so I will explain once again so we have initialized the PWM driver and then we have declared the uh, structure uh, variables here and then we have initialized the PWM parameters and then we have provided the sum of the parameters to the PWM that we want to generate and then we have opened the PWM connection and then we started the PWM using a function called PWM underscore start and then we have provided the required duty cycles to the PWM pin. Click on the project and click on the hammer icon to compile the project. So now we can see that project is compiled successfully without any errors and warning. Okay. Now connect the SG90 servo motor as shown in this figure and then now connect the board and click on the project and click on the debug icon. Now you can see once the debug prospect is open, so click on this resume icon to upload the code onto the MSV432. So once the code is uploaded onto the board, you will be able to see that okay, the servo is rotating 0, 90 and 180 degrees. So that's all for this tutorial. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching it.